Hi and welcome to the channel. My name is Megan and I've spent three Canadian winters living in Da Nang, Vietnam. I decided to do a little experiment and track all of my expenses for one month of living there. Da Nang, Vietnam is one of my favorite cities in the world and it also happens to be the cheapest place I have ever lived, especially for the value that you will get. Kick things off with what will likely be your largest expense, accommodations. I spent 6.7 million Vietnamese dong on a spacious studio apartment in my favorite area of the city. This is going to be roughly 300 US dollars per month. The place was fully furnished, included cutlery and dishes, and then the price also included weekly cleaning and high-speed internet. The one expense that is not included in the rental price is electricity, which I ended up paying about 40 US dollars for a month. For simplicity's sake, I'll be quoting these prices in US dollars given that the majority of the world has a better understanding of USD than Vietnamese dong. In relation to other apartments that are aimed at expats and located in the main tourist area, this apartment would be considered on the cheaper end. Many of the other foreigners that I knew were paying on average 7.5 million for a similar studio apartment. I did a video on different apartment walkthroughs at different price points if you are interested in having a better look at what you can get for your money. Next we'll cover food, which is going to include both eating at restaurants and then buying locally and cooking for yourself. I almost always buy groceries and eat at home. I would typically get a week's worth of fresh vegetables from the Bac Mayan market for about 12 US dollars a week. Anything that I couldn't find at the local market, I would buy at Vinmart, which is going to be similar to a convenience store like Circle K or 7-Eleven. I spent about 10 US dollars per week at Vinmart on things like oatmeal, eggs, and milk. I would additionally make about one trip per month to Latte Mart. Latte Mart is... How do you explain Latte Mart? <laughs> it's a massive superstore where every floor is designated to selling different things. So one will be all electronics, another will be all supplies or clothing, and then one is a grocery store. The top is also a movie theater, which is pretty cool. You can find absolutely everything here. So I pick up spices and then also fancy things that are imported, like almond milk. Definitely not cheap. When it comes to restaurants, I actually wouldn't eat out very often when I was just on my own. What I would do is spend about 10 US dollars per week on already cooked meats and seafood, which I would then add my own groceries to in order to make a meal at home. I would go out for dinner with friends maybe two or three times a week, and we would be going to the restaurants that are aimed more at tourists in the Mayan area. 120,000 Vietnamese dong, or about 5 US dollars. This is without including any alcohol. If you're adding in alcohol, beer is cheap, 50 cents. And then if you wanted something like wine or cocktails, you're paying almost as much as your meal price for it. Coffee also gets its own category because I would frequently do my work from cafes and order an Americano. It would be almost $2 for a coffee, which seems relatively expensive in comparison to the other food costs, but what you're paying for is the strong Wi-Fi and then the atmosphere of the coffee shop. You can spend much, much more than me on food and also much less. Avoid the imported things like almond milk and you'll save a lot of money. Some additional restaurant costs here would be getting a soda, it's around a dollar, beer is even cheaper. If you're interested in the street food, the local Vietnamese cuisine, you can get ba mi, which is a Vietnamese sandwich for less than a dollar, or a bowl of pho. Pha, pho, pha. If you're eating at those mid-range restaurants that I already mentioned, it's going to be around five dollars. And if you're interested in the higher end tourist restaurants, you'll be paying probably around 10 US dollars to 15 US dollars. There's some really cool restaurants actually lining the beach side, which are seafood restaurants, where you pick the live seafood that you want and they will cook it for you to your exact specifications. Definitely worth it at least once. These grocery prices are what you can expect to see if you're buying from Vinmart or any other local convenience store. The next expense on the list is transportation. One of my favorite things about Da Nang is the ability to walk pretty much everywhere. Anything you could possibly need is within walking distance if you live near the Mayan area. 
My only transportation expenses was the Grab car ride from the airport to the hotel and then back to the airport at the end of my stay, as well as one bus fare to Hoi An and then sharing a Grab car ride the 40 minutes back to Da Nang at the end of the night, which was split with friends. It is very, very inexpensive to use a Grab car or a Grab motorbike taxi. Many foreigners will also rent a motorbike that they will keep with them for the duration of their stay. This comes to about 1 million Vietnamese dong or around 40 US dollars for an entire month. Gasoline is then the only expense on top of that. The next expenses on my list would be toiletries and other necessities. When I travel, I travel carry-on only. So if I'm going somewhere and I know that I'll be renting an apartment and living there long term, I'll often just buy things like body wash and shampoo in a full-size container when I arrive. My first day, I headed to Back Mayan Market to a different section that is not with all the fruits and vegetables where you can find pretty much everything else. I ended up spending 15 US dollars and got all of my necessities and in addition to toiletries this would be things like mosquito spray and laundry detergent. I also bought a pair of walking shoes for $15 and then a blender for $12. Something to keep in mind if you do plan to buy your toiletries when you arrive is that many of the products in Asia end up having a whitening agent in them. So I would definitely recommend that you pack your own deodorant, face wash, face cream. You can also find brand name items that you're familiar with at Back Mayan or at the convenience stores, things like Pantene, but keep in mind that they are often the Asian version, so they likely will still have that whitening agent in them. They're also more expensive. Next up is entertainment, and I'm almost embarrassed to admit my spending here my largest expense in this category and one of my largest expenses out of all of these categories was actually going for massages i got about three one hour massages each week for a total of 13 us dollars each with the tip included i know this may seem excessive but hear me out three massages a week cost me a grand total of 155 us dollars for the month that would maybe get me a massage and a half in Canada. In addition to massage, my other entertainment costs were going to the movie theater one time. They show the big blockbuster movies and they also have a lot of them in English with the subtitles in Vietnamese. Uh, and that was only three US dollars for that ticket. And then something else I did, and I will continue to do every time I go back to Vietnam, is to make a trip to Asia Park. Asia Park is this beautiful state-of-the-art theme park just over the bridge on the city side of Da Nang. They have large roller coasters and big rides, but this amusement park is completely empty. I go back each year and it always costs somewhere around 10 US dollars. It is so worth it just to walk around even if you don't like the rides. Apart from those three things, I didn't do very many tourist activities on my trip. Things I have done in the past that are definitely worth doing and I would recommend that you budget for would be having clothing tailor-made in Da Nang. I've gotten multiple dresses made and both of them cost me 20 US dollars. Parasailing is also great and then the high van pass by motorbike day trip. So worth it. If you do a quick Google search, you'll see there is an endless amount of tourist activities. I also did a whole video on the top 10, but personally, after being there so many times, I just enjoy the lifestyle and being able to hit the beach every day. Next expenses don't necessarily fit into a specific category, but are certainly worth mentioning and budgeting for. I'm calling this additional. The first would be that you likely need a visa if you're going to live in Vietnam. I got a three month single entry visa and it cost me 25 US dollars. The next expense would be a SIM card. And each time I've gone with Viettel and I've gotten 4G unlimited coverage for an entire month for about 10 US dollars. I spent $15 on ATM fees which accounted for three separate withdrawals. Something to know about the ATMs in Da Nang is that they have very low withdrawal limits and then very high withdrawal fees, so you'll always want to maximize the amount that you can take out. I spent an additional $15 in transferring all of my rent and my rental deposit through TransferWise from my Canadian bank account into Vietnamese Dong for my landlord. I also, for the first time, went to the dentist. I was a little bit hesitant about this, but I heard a lot of good things. I ended up having my x-rays done and a full cleaning at a state-of-the-art location with the total costing me 25 US dollars. 
And then finally, an absolute essential that I will never, ever, ever travel anywhere without is travel insurance. I paid 37 US dollars for the month, so that's incredibly cheap. I'll link who I used down below. And um, they actually ended up covering me when I had to leave Vietnam unexpectedly because of the coronavirus. They paid for my full flight from Vietnam to Canada with no questions asked. Speaking of flights, I'm not including this as a monthly expense of living in Da Nang, but you may want to factor in your flight cost as well. For me, I booked a round trip before I left and it was 700 US dollars to get to Vietnam and then back to Canada. Another expense that I always say I will have and then never end up actually getting is a gym membership. In Da Nang, there are plenty of gyms, and for around $25, you can have a month access to a full gym with no AC, or you can upgrade to around $40 a month and end up having a state-of-the-art AC gym. One of the most popular options in Da Nang is the Mayan Sports Center, so they even have a massive pool as well as weight rooms and a field. So when you add it all up, my one month of expenses, which included rent, transportation, food, toiletries and necessities, entertainment, and then those additional uncategorized costs ended up coming to 930 US dollars. Not bad. That wouldn't even cover the rent of the apartment that I am currently living in. I am by no means a model citizen of frugality, and the goal of this video is to give you an idea of how much you would need to budget to live the lifestyle that you would want to live in Da Nang, Vietnam. Let me know in the comments below what you would be putting your money towards. The apartment? The gym? The food? I'm very curious. I'll also include a link where you can see the PDF of my expenses if you'd like a closer look. And then please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I hope to catch you back here again next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.